All right, here we go now. Rich Waltz, of course, who followed the Diamondbacks, who had a good road trip, and they're at 500. We'll get to that in a sec. Him and Tommy Hutton, of course. Showcase game for Rich is on May 12th, and he joins us here on High Heat on this Thursday. Rich, a pleasure. Obviously odd. Now, listen, Bumgarner and Muncie, you know, he can get a little up in the air sometimes, go a little crazy. And we know the umpires. We all know that there are some issues with them. How do you analyze what happened after that first inning yesterday in Miami? What's your take on it? You know, it's, it's uh, I was working with Luis Gonzalez yesterday, and that was Gonzo you heard on the, on the commentary. A couple things. Look, this is excessive. It's creepy. And, and, and just odd. Obviously, Bumgarner didn't like some of the strikes, uh, ball strike calls uh, in the bottom of the first. He gave up a, a solo homer to John Birdie to start things. Dan Bellino was working first base. Get, you know, check the hand. Just, I mean, staying on the hand, not even looking at the hand, waiting for Bumgarner. It's, it felt like the umpire was just baiting him at this point. One of the things we did on our, on our telecast was from that point on, we recorded a few other hand checks. Uh, Adrian Johnson was working third base. Bellino was working first. And in every one of those cases, it was just a, a cursory touch of the fingers. It took less than a second. That lingered way too long. And um, I, I thought Bumgarner handled it really well in, in his postgame press conference. He didn't really get into it. He just said, uh, you know, you saw the video. Um, I didn't think it was appropriate. And then he said, but I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm really proud of, of this young team for getting back up off the canvas with Bumgarner, one of the ERA leaders in baseball, ejected in the first inning. Uh, they fell down 3 nothing, and they came back, and Bumgarner was just thrilled about the win uh, because the Diamondbacks essentially now, had to come listen, back twice. That They did, ninth yep. inning home run. I, I, I appreciate Bumgarner. Listen, I'm a Giant fan. I know how great he is in a big game. But if you're a starting pitcher there, you can't get thrown out of the game after the first inning. I don't care what the umpire hey. does. Let them look at you for 40 minutes. I mean, you can't get thrown out of the game. You're putting your team in a tough spot. So you got to look at it from that standpoint, too. No? Yeah, and, he's, and he said that. And he said, he goes, you know, the full quote about the comeback was, I put my team in a really bad spot. So he admitted that and then went on to talk about the comeback and the emotions of it. But I got to be honest. Yeah, if very I, important. If, if, if I, I mean, the, the thumbs in the palms, it, it, there was just so much wrong there. Um, you know, Bumgarner didn't explode until after he got tossed out of the game. I, I don't know what was said, you know, after afterwards, but you're right. It, tough spot. And, you know, Tori Lovello, uh, the Diamondbacks manager, to your point, was tossed the game before. And as upset as he was, he knew that in that first inning, he, he couldn't get tossed there because he's going to have to manage the game, piece together the bullpen, uh, and he stayed in the game, and, and they ended up winning the ball game. Yeah, hell, a heck of a win. And Arizona, quietly rich. I mean, you know, 13-13. and 13. I mean, we saw them there against the Mets here in New York. They were terrible. They can't hit. They got a terrible batting average, but they've hit some home runs and have gotten some very good starting pitching. They also beat the Dodgers in a series, which they never do, so give them credit for that. Heck of a job by Arizona here, 26 games in. This is a team that, uh, what, they won 52, 53 games last year, 54 games. Nice job by Arizona after 26, winning half of them. Let me get your take on that. Go ahead. Yeah, they, lo they lost 110 games uh, last year, but they're not going to be pushovers in the West, which looks right now like the best division in baseball. You've got Arizona's now at 500, so every team in that division is, is from 500 all the way up. Um, you know, yeah, you're right. They're, the strengths right now for this ball club is starting pitching. They have their, their front three in the rotation are terrific. Bum Garner's awesome. If you haven't seen Merrill Kelly pitch, you need to see him Very as good. well. And, and, you know, uh, yeah. and Zach Gallen is the other guy that is just right now dominant. And, and the common thread, I think, for all three of these guys, talent certainly coming into the season – Bumgarner, one of the best postseason pitchers in history. Um, look at that team ERA, and, and don't uh, don't diminish the contributions of Brent Strom, their pitching coach. Strom, of course, was at the cutting edge of everything with Houston. Um, stepped away from Houston last year. He lives in Tucson. Diamondbacks called him and said, "Hey, you know, we got a young staff. We'd love to have you." And not only with Strom, but they've made a real commitment. They're a very forward-thinking organization. The Diamondbacks are. Not just Strom, but the entire uh, pitching department, so to speak, with assistants on down to, to guys like Dan Heron and, and people like that. So 
Uh, that trio, Gallon, Bumgarner, and Kelly, have three of the best ERAs, um, and they hit home runs. Uh, I know home runs are down, uh, but you wouldn't know it by watching this road trip. It was four games in St. Louis, three games against a really hot Miami team at the time, and uh, and the Diamondbacks. You know, they had some bats that, that weren't going. Cattell Marte was one of those guys. Marte was struggling uh, coming into this road trip. Um, but 12 home runs on this trip. And, of course, the, the home runs yesterday, just dramatic. And uh, Paven Smith there watching that one go fair. That was a, as an emo- a, a very emotional win for that, that ball club because the dugout was, quite honestly, enraged by the whole Bumgarner thing. You lost your ace, so to speak. Um, you had a chance for a sweep and they ended up and ended up getting it done. There's some really fascinating. It's it, for me, it was fun. And I'm filling in for Steve Berthium. It, it was fun for a week to just uh, jump in and, and get embedded with this team. There's a few players that I wasn't that familiar with. One of those is Dalton Varsho. And he's maybe the most unique player in all of major league baseball. He's a plus center fielder. He's a plus catcher. He's a left-handed bat. He hits lead off and he's got speed. He does all of those things. He's the son of Gary Varsho, the, the former Philly. Uh, his first name sure. is, af- is after Darren. He's named after Darren Dalton. His middle name is Darren John. Darren Dalton. Yep. He's named, and, and John is for John Vukovic, the two of the late Phillies, Vukovic and, and Dalton. Um, this guy is something. I, I, I hope that the country gets a chance to see a, a little bit more of him. Uh, the other is Paven Smith, the kid that homered yesterday. He's a local kid from up here. Uh, I'm, in, I'm still in Florida, uh, in Palm Beach. Uh, went to the University of Virginia, first round draft pick, you know, watching him swing and talking to Gonzo, he reminds him of a, of a young lefty hitter who has good uh, bat to ball skills, good bat head speed, and is probably going to start hitting more home runs as he gets old. He's about 26 years old, kind of Christian Yelich like uh, in that sense. So you mix in the, the uh, um, uh, Christian Walker and Cattell Marte and David Peralta. That's kind of what they've got. Their third baseman's on the way back, um, uh, Josh Rojas. They should have him uh, back shortly. Are they going to win the West? No, uh, but they're not going to lose 110 games. And their minor league system right now by MLB.com is ranked fourth uh, in all of baseball. They've got dynamic position players on the way. They've got some arms on the way. So it seems like Mike Hazen has done a really nice job of, of turning the ship in the right direction. They may be a year away from really contending, but they're an entertaining team. They're a fun team to watch right now. And it's funny, too, because I could see them, young team, you know, they're not going to win the division, they're not going to make the playoffs, but respectability is certainly in, in, in uh, you know, a possibility. And if they get into a spot in August and Bumgarner is pitching well, you know, they might be able to get, uh, you know, pitch them to a team that has a chance to win a pennant. I mean, that's not impossible, and they can add a lot of pieces. What's your take on that for a sec? Let me hear. Well, I mean, I think the important thing when any team is in that situation is organizational depth. I think that's one of the hardest things to acquire and build and keep in all the major league baseball. And it's so, uh, so important uh, for a general manager when you get to August, whichever way you're dealing, if you want someone or you want someone on the way back, organizational depth. And it feels like the Diamondbacks have that right now. Certainly Bumgarner, uh, yeah, I mean, if he's pitching well, I would think a lot of teams would be interested. Um, they've got some veteran guys in their bullpen up there. You know, on this road trip, they had three different players get saves uh, in this one. Mark Melanson, uh, Joe Mantiply, and uh, Ian Kennedy all got saved. So, th- yeah, there may be some pieces here, but there's enough young talent on the way. There's a nucleus of talent here, and especially the arms uh, in the rotation. Uh, I was talking about Gallon and Kelly, uh, that there seems to be a really good nucleus, a nucleus starting to, to gel here right now. And Tori Lavella does a nice Rich, job. Good to hear. Yeah, and Tori Lavella does a nice job. It was fun to be part of that. The, the staff was great to me. The other thing about the Mad Bum thing I wanted to point out, and, and everybody has dissected it and looked at it, how strong is Jeff Bannister, uh, the bench coach? Because you, you and I together, Chris, couldn't stop Madison Bumgarner, okay? Uh, Banny got his arms around him and, and got him out of there, so t- tip of the cap to him, too. Good job. He's a good man, Bannister. Well done there, Rich. Good to hear you back with us on May 12th, a showcase game for you. Appreciate you coming on here. Keep up the good work. All right, Chris. Thank you. Good to see you.